Good morning, brethren. I want to welcome you back to the School of the Word. Last week we began the School of the Word and we did an overall introduction to what will be covered in our sessions. As we start with Pastor Yanni, we went through the overall introduction to what we will cover. We said we will cover an introduction to the Old Testament, introduction to the New Testament. We'll look at that period between the two testaments. It's popularly known as the 400 years of silence. And then we'll end it all up with how to study the word. This morning, we are going to begin with the first course, the introduction to the Old Testament. But before we begin, let's just pause in a word of prayer and ask the Lord to guide us and to lead us as we study together. Let's just pray together. Father, we thank you and we bless you that, Lord, you are God and there is no other one. There's none besides you. There's none like unto you. There's none that can be compared unto you. You alone, you are God. And we thank you that, Lord, you've given us your word, that we may be able to study it and understand it, and that will help us in our walk with you. As we begin our course this morning, we ask for your wisdom, we ask for your visitation upon our lives, we ask for your insight, and that, Lord, you open the eyes of our understanding, that we may see wondrous things out of your law. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray and ask. Amen. Once again, welcome, brethren. This morning we'll begin our introduction to the Old Testament. But before we go into the Old Testament in detail, let's just do a brief overview of the Old Testament. Now, before you visit a country or any particular place, you first take an overview of the land by looking at the map of the place. You want to be able to take a lay of the land and familiarize yourself with the place. Similarly, we are going to climb up the mountain to the mountain top and take a panoramic view of the Old Testament. Because it's important for us to have that view of the Old Testament before we can go into the details. Let's get an overall, then we'll start diving into the details. Then begin with a quotation. This quotation was given and spoken by a great man, a man who gave some Bible studies later in his life. Prior to that, he used to be involved in preaching the gospel, leading many to the knowledge of the truth. But at the end of his life, he gave a Bible study. And as he summed up the Bible study, this is what he said. Then he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of the prophets, in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Those words were spoken by Jesus. After he had given a Bible study to the two brethren on the road to Emmaus, they were disappointed, they were wondering, they were hoping that he was going to bring freedom in the country, and then suddenly he's been crucified, and they were just they were just themselves. So as they're walking and he joined them, and he began to give them a Bible study and took them through the word and he summed it up with these particular words in Luke 24 and verse 44. Let's take a bit of a background, understanding of the Old Testament. The Old Testament is a collection of 39 books written over a period of 1,000 years. In total, the Bible has a collection of 66 books. But 39 of those books are found in the Old Testament. These were written by many different authors. Over 40 different authors were involved in compiling the Old Testament. And there's a lot of different 
subject matter that appears, we even have books that appear in the Old Testament. You have books on law, you have books on history, you have some prophetic books, you have some books on poetry, you have writings, you have different kind of um, material in the Old Testament. Now this Old Testament is part of a library, a library of books, 66 volumes in total. Like we said last week, the Old Testament make up about 80% of God's revelation to us. So it's critically important for us to be able to have an understanding of this Old Testament. Now, one thing you need to understand is that the Old Testament, or the story of the Bible, is set in a context. There's a background in which it is set. Same with the Old Testament. It's set in a context. It's not in a vacuum. It's in a context. So if we are going to be able to understand clearly what the Old Testament says and what it teaches, we need to have that in the back of our mind as we get into the Old Testament. It was not given in a vacuum. It has a context. And first understand each chapter, each book, each verse in the Old Testament, we need to properly gather that, get that background, that context, understand that context, so you can put each chapter, each book, each verse into the context within which it is found so that we can be able to read it within that particular context. Problems come when we read things out of their context. That's what happens if we decide we are going to neglect the Old Testament and simply jump into the New Testament. It's like taking a book, a volume, a journal, and we decide we are going to read towards the end. The last few chapters of the book, we may understand, but we never really understand the content because we don't have the background where it all comes from. So it's important for us to have that understanding of the Old Testament. As we said, the Old Testament is set in a context. Always keep that in mind as you study. There's a context, there's a background in which the Old Testament is set, where it finds its expression. Let's look at a map of the area. If you look at your map that you have in front of you, it's a map of the Promised Land. It's a map, rather, not of the Promised Land, of the ancient Near East. It's a map of the Middle East. Now, this place is also sometimes known as the Fertile Crescent. Why is it called that? Because if you look at that green part in your map, which is labeled Fertile Crescent, that was the fertile place, the fertile area in the world in which the Old Testament is located. If you look at your map, you find you have on the one side, you have the Nile Delta, the Nile Basin, where you have the Nile River and the Nile Basin and all that fertility that comes from the Nile. And on the other side, you have the area known as Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia simply means the land between two rivers. Now, this fertile crescent, the green area that we see in our Bibles, in, well, in, in the map, that green area we see in the map, that was, those, that area was the center of world power in the ancient world. Slotted in that little, small little place where you find that red arrow that I put there, that is where we find the promised land. The land God gave to his people. The land of Israel. Small little dot in the midst of this huge fertile crescent. This huge ancient Near East. Now, if you look at that map that comes on your screen at the moment, the next map that you have, 
that fetal crest, that blue area, if you look at that blue area there, that's where you find a number of things in that blue area. So like you said, the Old Testament is set in a context. It was set in the world known as the ancient Near East, or sometimes known as the Fertile Crescent. And the, that time, those, that was the center of world power. On one side, you had Egypt, which was a world power in the ancient world. And on the other side, you had Mesopotamia and all the empires that rose in that region as a world power power. So literally, the whole of the Old Testament is a power struggle between these two centers of power. Egypt on the one hand, and then Mesopotamia on the other hand, and all the empires that rose in that area. Let's take a feel of that area. Let's take a feel of that area. If you look at that map that you have in front of you, the one with the blue area in it, if you look at that map, you see that the ancient Near East stretches from the Caspian Sea up there in the north, right down to the Persian Gulf, as you can see on your map, and then right to the other side where you find Egypt, where you have your, the Red Sea and the now Delta on the other side, and then right up, up to where you see the Black Sea, and in between you have the Mediterranean Sea. That whole area is what was known as the ancient Near East. And this ancient Near East was the home of many of the empires of the ancient world. In that area, we have empires like Babylon, the Medes and the Persians, we have the Parthians, you had the Assyrians, the Elamites, the Kassites, the Ammonites, the Aramites, the Canaanites, the Moabites, the Mitanni, the Hittites. All these were empires that rose within the ancient Near East. And right at the crossroads, as we saw in the previous map, was the promised land. Small little stretch of land known as the promised land. If you go back to the previous map that I showed you, that we saw with the fetal crescent, that green area, that little place where I put the red arrow, that was the fetal, that was the promised land within the fetal crescent. So let's just blow that little place up and see it in detail. There is a map that you have of the promised land. That's that little thing, small little space, that small little stretch of land that you see on that map that you showed at the beginning. That's what it looks like. That's your area of the promised land. And then if you go further on that one, you go back to the previous one that we saw just now with the blue areas. On one side, on the Egyptian side of this fertile crescent, you have the Sahara Desert, and you have the Sinai Desert, and in the area of Mesopotamia on the other side, you have the Arabian Desert, and surrounding these all areas is the Zagros Mountains. Up there on top in Anatolia, you have the Taurus Mountains, and then up there, Near the Caspian Sea, you have the Caucasus Mountains. And then you have different seas that existed in the area. You have your Black Sea up there. You have the Caspian Sea. You have the Persian Gulf. You have the Red Sea of the Mediterranean Sea. This whole area is the kind of the world within which the Old Testament finds its expression. Its expression. Now we said previously, the ancient Near East had two major world powers. On one side was Egypt, and on the other side was Mesopotamia and all the empires that rose in the region. And the whole story of the Old Testament was always a power struggle between these two centers of power. 
And each time the ancient powers contended with each other, Egypt wants to attack the empire that's reigning in Mesopotamia, they had to go through the promised land. They could not go directly through the mountains, through the deserts. They had to pass through that little stretch known as the promised land. And you know what happens? When they pass through your land, they end up fighting with you. They end up attacking you if you can't come. If you can't allow them to pass through freely, sometimes they even end up conquering you and make you a vassal to that particular kingdom. So always, at every stage, when the ancient powers contended with each other and had to fight with each other, either from Mesopotamia to Egypt or from Egypt to Mesopotamia, they had to pass through the promised land. The promised land was set set at the crossroads. And someone said, when you're at the crossroads, you're bound to be run over. You're always in the line of fire. And that's exactly what happened with the children of God in the promised land. Being at the center, being at the crossroads, they were always being run over. Right from the inception, right from the beginning, they've always been under occupation, under oppression and under conquest by one or another foreign power. They've always been in the cross fire, in the line of fire. One time, you remember, they were in Egypt as slaves. At another time, they went to Babylon and Assyria. Again, taken into captivity. They're always at the crossroads. And when world powers were fighting each other, they had to pass through the land, the promised land, and that resulted into wars being fought. And sometimes the children of God, the people of God, the prom in the promised land being conquered or being attacked by one of these world powers that lived. If you remember, in the time of Jesus, they were under Roman oppression. Before that time, they were under the Greek oppression. Then they were ruled by the Parthians, by the Persians. Then they were conquered by the Egyptians. One time they were conquered by the Assyrians and taken into captivity. Then they were also conquered by the Hittites. So every time, right from their history, they've always been at the crossroads. In our modern era, the promised land has been under the control of the Ottomans, the Arabs, the Muslims, and finally they were under the control of the British. And that ended when Israel became an independent state in 1948. So this is the world within which the Old Testament is set. That's where it finds its expression. A world where they're at the crossroads. A world where there were superpowers who were contending with each other to be the one in control of the whole region. And in the process, the people in the promised land were always being run over. And that's the kind of geography in which the Old Testament is set. Now, when we understand that kind of geography, it's got mountains, there are rivers, there are deserts. There are, and then we understand the history, the superpowers. When we understand that kind of a background of the Old Testament, we'll be able to understand the stories of the Old Testament much better. For instance, the book of Daniel is all about going into exile. If you read the book, there are three main um, movements into exile, so to say. First was Daniel and the young men taken into captivity, into exile, into Babylon. Then Ezekiel followed afterwards. Then in 586, the rest of the people were taken into captivity and the city and the temple, second temple, the first temple rather, 
bent to the ground. The book of Ezra is all about returning from exile. After 70 years of captivity, the book of Ezra is all about returning from exile. Three um, dispersions and three groups coming back. The first group came back under Zerubbabel, that's in Ezra 1 to 6. The second group came back under Ezra, that's in chapter 7 to 12. And the last group came back with Nehemiah. So three groups went, three groups came back. But of course, not everybody who went came back. And that's where you find the book of Esther. Esther is all about assimilating, finding a place in a foreign land. They went to a foreign land and some decided they're not going to come back. And that's where you find the book of Esther. Let's look at the time frame of this period. Let's just look at the Old Testament in detail, in, 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 in general, rather. You have 39 books in the Old Testament, from the book of Genesis right up to the book of Malachi. If you look at the, the graph that is set before you, the graph that you have in front of you. Let's try and understand that graph a bit. It says Hebrew history. Now, this graph is uh, basically broken up for easier understanding into segments of 500 years. So the whole history of the Old Testament really, really spans a period of over 2,000 years. Of course, the book of Daniel gives prophecies that are over 2,000 years later into the future, but the, literally the history of the Old Testament spans about 2,000 years from the time of the calling of Abram right up to the book of Malachi. It's about 2,000 years in between. So we're breaking that up into four equal parts of 500 years to make it easier to understand. First you have, before you go into the two, the, the, the four segments, the first part you see on your chart is from Genesis 1 to 11. And that we are going to call the prehistory, before the history of the children of God started. That's prehistory. That's where you have stories of creation, the fall of man in the garden, Noah and the flood, the tower of Babel and the confusion of tongues, and in Genesis 10, the table of nations. That whole period is prehistory. There isn't much data that we can be able to get out that shows us how, old, how long that period was. It's a bit difficult. But beginning from Genesis chapter 12 and right up to Malachi chapter 4, the last book of the Old Testament, that whole period is what we call the story of God. It's when God is fully involved in the affairs of man. In the first period, he was creating man. He was getting, he was, um, uh, uh, it was the, the flood, the um, confusion of tongues. But the whole history begins with Genesis 12. It begins with the call of Abram. As you see on your chart, it's all in segments of 500 years. And we've put titles at the top. The first one is election. Then you have the Exodus, then you have the Empire, and you have the Exile. And in the first 500 years from 2000 to 1500, Israel was led by the patriarchs. That's from the time of Abram up to Joseph. They're the ones leading the area. You have Abram, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. That's from Genesis 12 up to 50. Then the second segment is what we call the Exodus. During that time, Israel was being led by the prophets. That's from the time of Moses to the time of Samuel. The third segment is what we call the empire, the time when Israel was now, had the whole land to themselves. 
Now, son of the time of Saul as the first king of the entire land of Israel. Then you had David. Then you had Solomon, all part of the United Kingdom of Israel. And then the last part we've called the exile, the dark age of the children of Israel. That's from the time of Joshua, who came back with Zerubbabel, up to about the time of Caiaphas in the New Testament. Now, if you notice that each segment has books that are related to it. The first segment of Abram, we have the book of Genesis 12 to 50. The time of Moses and the Exodus, you have those books, the, the books of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And also connected to that and related to that is the books of Joshua, Judges, and Ruth. They all have history connected to them in that area. Then you have the time of David and the empire, and you have those books that are linked to it, the books of um, Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles, and also in that period, also that's when you have the poet, poetry books such as Psalms, Song of Songs, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes, written during that period of time as well. And we also have the time of the, like we said, it's the time of the prophets. You have the prophets Elijah and Elisha. Unfortunately, we don't have any books that were written by Elijah and Elisha. So there's nothing we can be able to look at and see this was the, uh, the book written by Elijah or Elisha on what they prophesied. We can only read about what happened in their lives through the other books that were written during that period of time. And then the last part is the time of the exile, the dark time of the children of Israel. And in that period, you also have books associated with that period. You have the books that were written before they went into exile. Those are in the light blue color on your, on your chart. That's Joel, Amos, Hosea, Micah, Isaiah, Jonah, Nahum. Obadiah, Habakkuk, and Zephaniah. Then you have books that were written during the period of the exile. Books by Jeremiah, Lamentations, and Ezekiel. If you remember, Ezekiel was taken into captivity into Babylon. In the second batch of those who were taken into captivity, after Daniel went, the next group went, and the key figure there was Ezekiel. Then you have books that were written after they came back from exile. That's books like Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. During, during that time also, after they came back from exile, there are some books which recorded the history, such as the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. And you have Esther, it talks about the history of the ones that remained behind. And you have the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel has some history of what happened after they came back from the exile. And it also has some prophetic material before the exile. Now, within this period, there are two slots, two divisions of 400 years each. During that time, God did not speak. When Israel went into captivity in Egypt, sometimes you think when you close Genesis 50 and open Exodus 1, it's just the next day, there's a gap in between. The Bible says they're going to be in captivity in Egypt for about 400 plus 400 years. Then when you close the last book of the Old Testament, the book of Malachi, and you open the first book of the New Testament, the book of Matthew, sometimes we, take the, we have the impression it's the next day. It's actually another gap of 400 years. We'll cover that gap of 400 years in the next in one of our next uh, courses that are coming up. It's called the 400 years of silence or between the two testaments. So what are we saying this morning? The story of the Old Testament, we need to understand it. It has a context. It has a background. There's a world in which it is located. We saw from the map, it's called the ancient Near East or the Fertile Crescent. Why is it called the Fertile Crescent? It was the fertile area of the day. That green patch you saw in your map, that was the fertile, fertile area of the day, 
On one side, you had the Nile Delta. On the other side, you had Mesopotamia, the land between two rivers, the rivers Tigris and Euphrates. Very fertile piece of land. And it was also the period, the, the place of great empires of the day. You had the Egyptian Empire on the Egyptian side, and in Mesopotamia, you had a multitude of empires that were arising. That's where you find your Babylons and your Middle Persians. You have your Kassites and Mitannis, Hittites and the Assyrians. All of them find expression in that Mesopotamia area. And we look, also looked at the geography of the area, of the mountains that surround the area. You have the seas that surround the area, such as the Caspian Sea, Red Sea, Black Sea, the Persian Gulf, Mediterranean Sea, all those waterways that are in those areas. So that's the world of the New Testament. And if we are going to be able to understand the New Testament, we need to understand this background. I want to thank you. This is where we end our first session. And um, I want to say thank you for attending this class. I trust it has been helpful to you. And I've given you a bit of a background to the whole Old Testament and how it flows together. We've seen that chart, how it all flows together. And then... We'll see you in the next class. If you have any questions or any comments, please post them in the comments section on YouTube or make your comment on Facebook. Please, before you go, support this channel. Click the like button and also click on the subscribe so you can subscribe to the channel. And also the notification bell that when we upload new videos, you can be notified. God bless you, and see you in the next class.